I'm no angel, but give me some grace and I still won't take accountability for anything. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Raphael and I'm here to review part one of the reunion to season eight of The Real Housewives making their current husband say hello to their current boyfriend of Potomac. So we start the reunion off of everyone arriving at the location in New York City. And you know what is so crazy to me is that they literally wake up at like five, six o'clock in the morning just to get ready to get on stage and to argue with each other so early in the morning. Like that just can't be a healthy way to start the day, right? Especially for Robin. Robin literally woke up, she got ready, she got on stage just to announce to us again for the hundredth time that she still believes the lies that Juan was telling her about his affair. Like, just imagine waking up so early in the morning and being delusional. You know, no breakfast, no orange juice, just lies and bullshit to start the day off. But we start the reunion off, we see Andy on stage, and of course, we're gonna talk about the stage, the seating placement, the looks. We're gonna start off with the stage. It was inspired by their magazine photo shoot that they did together, except the NECA, and all of their pictures were hanging on the walls, except the NECAs. So I thought it was cute. The mannequins were a little bit creepy though, and I believe that that was also a homage to their fashion. Thank goodness they were not dressed like Giselle because that would have been real scary. So now we get to the seating placement, right? We get Giselle. She comes out first and she's thinking, okay, you know, obviously there's my first seat. Let me get comfortable. Hey, Andy, who's sitting there? Of course, he's going to say me. Um, well, actually, Karen is going to sit there. You're going to sit next to her. <laughs> you know Giselle was stuck. She was like... Uh, oh, oh, okay, okay, Andy. Yeah, no, no, no. That makes perfect sense. No, I, I'm, I'm totally here for it. Like, congratulations to Karen. No, it's okay. I'll sit right here next to her. Let me just. Oh my God, I don't even know what this feels like. What is this? Let me sit down. I, I'm really happy to be to be here, Andy. <laughs> Like she was just two seconds away from just ripping everybody's pictures down from the wall and leaving. But you did it to yourself, honestly. You you haven't given us anything in the first seat for all these years. And now, you know, obviously they're sick of you. So then we see everybody else. They're all coming out. We're going to start off with Ashley. Ashley, she's sitting on the very, 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 very... Very, 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 very left end of the couch. And yeah, Ashley, that's basically the Batman signal to, to try to get you off the shelf. <laughs> She's sitting there as for her look. You know, she looks really, really pretty, but I don't know. I kept looking at her dress and her dress. I like the dress, but something is missing. It's like Michael gave her a budget of $500 to make the dress. And halfway through the process, she ran out of money. So now she's looking at it like, oh man, I can't afford the bottom half of this dress. You know what? Fuck it. I'll just wear it like that. I'll tell everybody that it's supposed to look like this. I have nice legs anyway. <laughs> but she looks good though. Then we have Wendy sitting next to her. Okay, understandable. I love her look. I love the dress and the jewelry. The hair, the hair is a no. I feel like she should have done something like an updo with curls. The hair throws off the whole entire look completely. Then we have Candace sitting next to her and it's so bittersweet that this is her last reunion. She looks good. I love the lace gloves. The short brown hair on her looks really nice. Then we have Mia. I don't want to get emotional, but... You know, Mia, she is the first chair. She snatched it away from Giselle and hopefully she puts it to good use and I'm pretty sure that she will. And, you know, I'm not crazy about her look though. You know, at first I actually thought her dress was made of hair. You know, the top half of it at least. She looks good, I guess. But, you know, the hair, it's just a ponytail. It's just kind of like, uh, it's simple, but it's, it's okay, right? Karen is the other first chair, which I don't understand why her and Mia didn't switch spots. Why is she sitting next to Giselle? As for her look, I am not a fan of the dress at all. I do not like it. I I do like the short hair on her. I hope she keeps that for season nine. If she comes back, I love it. As for Giselle, Giselle, she's sitting right next to her in the second chair. <clears throat> Let me repeat that. She's sitting next to her in the second chair. <clears throat> I know Giselle is sitting there the entire reunion like, oh, so, so this is what it feels like. <laughs> As for her look, I mean...
I mean, what can I say? I mean, if we're being honest, she, she looks really, really good. And you know, I know people could say, oh, you know, it's a basic black dress. You know, of course, everybody's gonna look good like that. No, we can't use that excuse because even Giselle could make the most basic look even more basic. But I wanna know, Giselle, who is responsible for this look? You know, because whoever the person is, they deserve every single award, a Oscar, a Grammy, a MTV movie award. They deserve everything because you look good. Robin is sitting next to her, which is so funny that her and Giselle are sitting side by side on the same couch. Hmm. But as for her look, she looks like a villain from a Batman movie. Like she just goes around Gotham City just tormenting all the side chicks. Stay away from Juan Dixon. <laughs> But she looks good though. I love the outfit. I love the bob cut. I'll actually have to give her the best dress at this reunion. The only thing I would have added is maybe a darker shade of lipstick, but I love the look. Then we have Aneka. Aneka looks beautiful, but I wasn't sure how to feel about the dress. I think I like it. I'm not sure how I feel about the, the neck pillow portion of the dress. You know, then again, she'll probably get get bored of hearing Robin talk about Juan and his nonsense. So she'll probably want to take a nap and relax on her neck pillow dress. So I think I like it. Collectively, I think that they all look beautiful together. As for my reunion look, you know, it's Wendy inspired. The professor is here. More like substitute teacher. <laughs> but yes, my look is Wendy inspired. Quick, take a picture. I don't know, something about something about this outfit you know it makes me want to go produce my own talk show or open up a bar with peterson or peach thomas hopefully aneka doesn't want to fight me <laughs> so andy starts it off by telling them as a fan of this show i was pretty disappointed watching this season this show is all about conflict and resolution and we really didn't see a lot of resolution aka get your shit together or else this show is going to be canceled and we're going to reboot the real housewives of dc so then karen she tells them well, you know what, Andrew? I feel like us as a collective of women, we could move forward and put our differences to the side for the better of the show. We could all take accountability. Right, ladies? So they all take turns by saying, yeah, I'll take accountability. Me two, me three, me four. Here goes Giselle. <sighs> la, 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 la. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm like, you know, so they finally ask her, so Giselle, what about you? Giselle, she's like, Oh yeah, I'm ready for the accountability from everybody else. And I'm like, really, Giselle? Really? That's how we're starting the, 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 the reunion off already with your bullshit? And then they ask Robin, Robin, what about you? Huh? <laughs> She's like, yeah, 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 sure. And I'm like, again, both of them continue weighing this show down. Like, they all agreed to move forward. Even Ashley, not that she had a choice anyway, because that bank account told Ashley, yeah, you need to move forward or else. <laughs> Yeah, both of them are the two that are like, uh, yeah, I guess we'll take accountability. So then they start talking about swallowing. I'm like, excuse me, Andy? You know, we're only 10 minutes into the reunion and we're talking about swallowing? Like, I thought we came to a classy reunion, but they started talking about Robin's method of swallowing. And I said it before, but I wish the fuck I would swallow some unfaithful semen like the way she does. Like... Where's the self-respect? And you know, Ashley, Ashley, she's too busy treating her mouth like a microwave. She's like, oh yeah, you know, if you give it to him good, you know, they'll, they'll fall asleep right away and you could just spit it out because you know, her method is that, you know, instead of swallowing, she keeps it in her mouth for a while. You know, she lets it marinate and everything and get warm in. And then just, uh, Giselle was so gross. Giselle was just like, oh, you're supposed to just spit it out like this in your hand. And I'm like, ew. <laughs> I'm like, Giselle, what? Like, what do you mean in your hand? And then the motion, like, absolutely not. Our bodies have a couple of holes for a reason. Learn to use one at least. Like, she says, like, ew. <laughs> like, do some of you do that? Mia says that she does use the method with her boyfriend, which is crazy that she has a boyfriend and a current husband at the same time at this reunion. Meanwhile, what does Robin have? She barely has one man to show up to the reunion for her. So Andy tells her, oh, so you've been doing it with a DJ? Um, first of all, he's not a DJ. He's a radio personality. Uh, potato, potato, Mia. So then he asks Karen, Karen, when Wendy asked you about the question about how many people have you slept with, why did you give this whole answer about wet dreams? Karen, she was like, well, Andy, well, you know, I misinterpreted the question because when Wendy asked me that, I thought that wet, wet dreams were also included in the answer. You know what I'm saying? So then Robin, 
<sighs> Robin, Robin decides to take a shot at Karen. And she was like, oh, so what you're saying is that you're not keeping track. You lost track of how many people you slept with. Karen, without even thinking it, it's almost like she had it ready for Robin. She was like, no, Robin, that will be Juan. <laughs> Like, Robin, honestly, I don't even know why you do it to yourself. Like, do you not hear yourself before you say anything to Karen? Like, you know that she's going to come at you ten times harder. And all Robin could do was, <laughs> yeah, sure, that would be you. Like, you know she was crying deep down inside. <laughs> Andy then asks Robin, do you honestly believe that Juan never cheated on you with Coach Bree, the girl from Canada, half of the United States? Robin, she goes on to say, um, well, you, you know, uh, you know, Juan, his, his story, I mean, I, I, I mean, I honestly, I don't, and it's so funny that she is so quick to jump into everybody's conversations or to accuse Karen of sleeping around, yet the second that the finger is pointed at her and they're asking her about her marriage and Juan, all of a sudden now she's stumbling and she's like, a lot of things out there could be true or untrue. And if the person that he was with wasn't beautiful, this wouldn't be a conversation. So I choose to believe him. Oh, Robin, so pathetic, so foolish. Not only do you swallow his semen, you also swallow his lies. Like, sometimes with cheating, it's much more deeper than just looks. So then Andy, Andy goes for the finish her because he tells Robin, Robin, he's not going to be here tonight, right? No, he actually declined. And he doesn't have a basketball game to attend to, right? And I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, who pissed Andy off? Like, clearly he is sick of Robin's shit, right? Robin is like, no, he actually doesn't. And Wendy said it perfectly. You're constantly being ridiculed by his actions, yet he's not even here to protect his image, his marriage, at least to be in your corner. And I just, I don't understand it either. Like, is it love? Is it something much deeper? Does he have the password to your embezzled hat business? Because I just don't understand how she chooses to be on the show. Every other episode constantly making a fool out of herself and believing his lies. And for what? For Juan Dixon? You know, meanwhile, he's probably down the street at some local hotel with the next bitch. I mean, the next person. <laughs> and since Robin just confirmed it for us, let me get my Juan chart. So this season, obviously, I've been keeping track how many episodes Juan has been a part of this season. And, you know, Robin just confirmed to us that he's not at this reunion. And that is three episodes. So for this episode, he's not here. For next episode, he's not here. And the third part of the reunion, he's also not here. And, you know... I had high expectations for him because at the beginning of the season, you know, he started off strong and then somewhere in the middle, it just, it got wishy-washy, you know, and then these last couple of episodes, he made a, you know, he, he had a booking fee every now and then he would show up. And then now at the reunion, when it actually mattered, he's not even here to defend Robin. Surprise, surprise. You let her down. You let me down. But most importantly, you let me down. <laughs> So overall, out of 21 episodes, he has been in 9 out of 21 episodes. I actually thought, we, you know, it would have been more, but, you know, that's the end of the Juan chart. It was fun doing that. Thank you all so much for enjoying that. You know, maybe for next season, I'll do a different type of chart. So then Candace, Candace was like, you know, it was never about Juan cheating on you or trying to expose whatever was going on. It's the fact that you're a hypocrite and you always expect everybody else on the show to share about their lives, yet you're over here hiding this behind Patreon. Robin says, when have I ever demanded anything from anybody else? And you know, it's almost scary how delusional her and Giselle are. Like they live in a whole different reality as if we can't go back to previous seasons and look at your actions then. So then Karen, she jumps in it and she's like, well, first of all, Robin, remember a couple of years ago when you came from my institution with Raymond, you know, my husband, Ray, you talked about his taxes and you wanted to know about that. So what do you mean you never demanded anything from anybody else on the show? Robin, now she's, now she's playing semantics, right? She's like, well, I mean, that was public information. Okay, so, so was uh, Juan's behavior and his cheating. That was in the public as well. So what does that mean? Like, Robin, you, you pick and choose. What did Candace say? The line is always moving. So then they start talking about how Robin has a group chat that she sends videos to. Candace, she pulls out this big ass poster that she got from Walmart. She takes it out. She almost whacks Mia in the face with it. And everything on it is blurred. You know, she was trying to make her point across, but I mean, everything just kind of fell flat. Even she was looking at it like... Hmm. Andy then asks Candace, what exactly is it that you want from Robin? Candace starts getting emotional. She starts crying. She pulls out the new housewife, Napkiana. And before she even touched her eye, all of a sudden we hear Giselle. She's like, oh, tears, tears. She starts laughing. And I'm like, since when has Giselle ever been that bold? What did Nini say? I know that dress doesn't have you feeling that shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me go get my wine. <laughs> I'm like Giselle, and she starts laughing at her while she's crying, and she's like, oh, these tears, these fake tears, always with the theatrics, always with the fake tears, 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 tears. And I'm like, I'm like Giselle, like, where was this energy for the first chair? Obviously, she's fighting for her life to get that chair back, right? That's the only reason why she's poking at Candace. And do I feel bad for Candace? No. I've said it before that if Giselle ever chose to reply to anything that Candace said about her, then it's fair game. Like, yes, Giselle was the first one to start this issue between her and Candace. And yes, she is fucked up for putting out these accusations on Chris, trying to basically ruin their marriage. And yes, Candace's reaction to that, it was warranted, including the name calling, or at least most of the name calling that she said to Giselle at the reunion last season. It was all warranted, but I feel like people are not accustomed to Giselle ever replying to anybody on the show. She's not quick with her words. They're so We're so used to just seeing Giselle just lay on the ground and just get stepped on by everybody, including Wendy, Karen, and Candace, and even the audience, that the one time, the one time that she actually has any type of fire for Candace, now all of a sudden it's, wow, she's so mean, she's so mean. I can't believe she did that. Wow, so cold, so heartless. And Candace is the same one who said, you and your dwindling uterus. But now because Giselle is laughing at her tears, that's taking it too far. That's as being too mean like you can't expect somebody whether right or wrong to not defend themselves like it just does not work like that and Giselle on the other hand this is where you messed up because at the beginning of the reunion everybody agreed we're all gonna take accountability we're all gonna take accountability you and Robin were the only ones who were like uh, I'm not sure about that and your actions right here prove that like okay yeah you may have gotten a one-up on Candace but you know in the long run you only took you and Candace 20 steps even further back Honestly, not that it mattered anyway, because whether she laughed or not, her and Candace, that whole relationship is done anyway. So, you know, and speaking of relationships, Candace, you need to stop crying over Robin. Robin is not your friend. The fact that she was laughing along, uh, Giselle laughing at you crying, that's not your friend. You want all of this from her, but yeah, you know, she has proven time and time again that she does not care about the relationship the same way that you do. So you need to let it go. Giselle starts talking about the death threats that her and her daughters are receiving due to the backlash at last year's reunion when Candace called her a colorist. And first of all, nobody, whether you like a housewife or do not like a housewife, should be sending any type of crazy messages like this to anybody on the cast. It's never that serious. You are not a fan. You are crazy. But then she starts telling Candace, Candace, you went on Twitter and you started liking a bunch of tweets saying, Giselle doesn't know how to dress. Giselle's house is funny looking. Giselle doesn't have the first chair. And I'm like, okay, why are you listing all your accomplishments? <laughs> But then she claims that, you know, due to, uh, to what's her name, to Candace liking a bunch of tweets of her being a colorist, that that's the reason why she's getting a bunch of death threats. I, I mean, I'm trying to understand how she's squeezing the correlation between the two, but I, I, I don't get it. I mean, yeah, Candace, I mean, me personally, I'm not going to do the same thing as Candace and like a bunch of tweets on somebody I do not like. You know, Candace, she does go online. She does go on Twitter. She does let Twitter get to her head, but you can't control how Candace reacts to you coming for her husband or her marriage. Like, if she wants to tweet all day and all night about you, then it is what it is. If anything, you get on Twitter too. Tweet something back. <laughs> you know, and then Robin. Ooh, Robin... Robin had the audacity because next thing you know, she jumps in it and she tries to derail this whole conversation from Giselle back to Candace. Candace, but we talked about your husband, Chris, on our, on our podcast, Reasonably Delusional, one time, which honestly, I don't believe that. I feel like it was multiple times. We talked about him one time and, you know, we were talking about him sending his limp penis pictures to some random woman. <sighs> Robin, Robin, I know, I know, I know that you out of all people on this show are not trying to accuse somebody else's husband of, be, of being unfaithful. I know that that's not you talking. <laughs> Meanwhile, when the husbands come out, you're going to have an empty chair in the back. Casper the ghost is going to come out for you in attendance. Like, Robin is the same person who does not believe that her husband cheated on her. But the second that she gets any speculation on somebody else's husband potentially cheating, all of a sudden it's true. Like, you cannot make any of this up. <laughs> 
So then Candace claims that Giselle is accusing Chris of SA. She says, Giselle, you have been saying in your confessional that he made you do this. He made you go in the room. He made you do this. Giselle, all of a sudden, again, just like her bestie next to her, she has amnesia. She's like, what are you talking about? I never said he made me do anything. I just said that I went into a room with him. And then... We rewind the footage, and what does the footage say? Giselle and her confessional out of her own mouth. Yeah, he made me go into a room. And again, Giselle, this is not one of those slip-ups that, oops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say this. Like, you can't say that. Like, these are, this is a strong accusation, you know, and words have consequences. Words have meaning. And, you know, you have to get your story correct. This is why your story has been side-eyed by everybody, because it's just like, what, what really happened? You know, not invalidating her feelings, but, you know, you're over here mixing up your words. Your story constantly changes. So eventually, that was that Candace. She was like, you know what? I'll take ownership and my part in this, and I'll apologize for the things that I said about you at last year's reunion. I can own up for that. And honestly, Candace was much better than me because I would have told Giselle and Robin, fuck both of you. I'm not apologizing for anything, especially if I know I'm leaving after the season. Just no, because Giselle is constantly playing a petty game. Even her her take her take in accountability sounded pathetic because she was like, um, well, I mean, you know, I guess, you know, for, for some of the words that I use, I didn't say he made. I, I meant to say something else. So I'll take accountability for that. Yeah, whatever, Giselle. At this point, you know, the damage is already done. So then he asks uh, Karen, Karen, your relationship with Robin, it's up in the air right now. What's going on? Say three nice things about Robin. Karen, she was like... Um, well, you know, Robin, you know, she's, um, she's a very intelligent person. Intelligent where? You were literally sitting right next to her when she was talking about Juan just a second ago, and you call that intelligent? Maybe she's being sarcastic. She continues, um, she's a very calculating person. <laughs> Just constantly being shady towards Robin. And I feel like Robin, she's into that. She likes her being shady towards her because the entire time she's just smiling like with her bob. So then it was her turn to say something nice about Karen. I believe she said that she was witty. She looks good for her age. And then all of a sudden they started getting into it. And I was kind of confused on their argument because they were talking about Karen being a fence, a metal fence, a picket fence. I don't know. At the end of the day, I don't understand her tagline and she's a fence. So then they cut to a lunch break and everybody goes in the back. Mia, she gets on the phone with her new boyfriend, Ink, right? She's like, um, hi, Ink. I'm so happy to see you, babe. Oh, you like my legs? Thank you. I love this dress. Gordon, Gordon, come say hi. Next thing you know, Gordon, he comes over. He's leaning over her shoulder and he's like, hi, Mia, how are you? <laughs> like, absolutely not. Gordon, what is wrong with you? What? Hold on. What is wrong with you? <laughs> that is crazy. Mia is so bold. Like, she is so crazy for this. Like, she literally has her current boyfriend, you know, talking to her her, her ex-husband, her current ex-husband. And he's just greeting him like, hey, man, how are you doing? <laughs> like, where is your pride? Like, where is your self-esteem? Like, you know, you and Robin are made for, to, uh, are made for each other because this is crazy, right? He really came over the shoulder and said hi, like... That is crazy, but regardless, that was that. They get back on stage. I'm still in shock. They start talking about her relationship with Gordon currently, and she was like, Um, I mean, I currently live in a penthouse suite in Washington, D.C. So not Potomac. Hmm. That's what you're trying to tell us? She continues, and she was like, Um, well, you know, Gordon, he lives in Charlotte currently, but he's about to live across the street from me. And I mean, okay, very weird. And I can see him trying to be controlling in that aspect too. Then she starts talking about her relationship with her current boyfriend, Inc. How they were long lost lovers. You know, they were, they go all the way back. Eventually they split because he wanted to go to Atlanta. He moved there to work on his radio personality, whatever he was doing. And she wasn't down for that. But, you know, like all, like all situations, you know, sometimes... Sometimes you get bored of the current dick that you're, you know, that you're with. And then you, you, you kind of want to taste the old dick that you used to have back in the day, right? So that's exactly what she did. She called him up and she was like, hey, um, um, Inc., um, you know, do you mind coming to Potomac? <laughs> and now we're here, you know. But, but at the same time, she also claims that she was talking to him while also being with Gordon. So that whole situation is just very sticky. But, you know, kudos to Mia. Mia has two men. <laughs> You know, but then Wendy, she puts her on the spot and she was like, wait, so Gordon actually told you that, 
you know, supposedly Jeremiah, their son, you know, he might be the son of Ink. So which one, it, is it true or whatever? And then Andy asks Mia. Mia, she comes out with it and she was like, um, I mean, possibly because Ink, he still believes that he's the father. And I'm like... Like, like Mia, maybe we should get the ball going with that and figure that out if it's true or not. Like, that's a that's a strong claim. And if he feels like he's the father, and if he is, then Jeremiah and Ink, they have they have a right to know that. Like, you know, because again, like I said last week, your son is gonna grow up. He's probably gonna watch the show. He's gonna want to know who's his who's his real father is. So, you know, like, come on now, she's just throwing it out there like it's like some random speculation, but. You know, that was that, and we left it off with that, and yeah, this whole first part of the reunion, yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> so let me know what you all thought about this whole first part. Let me know what you all thought about my, my Wendy-inspired look, you know, and let me know down in the comments. Bye, everybody. Mwah.